No! 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 This is gonna have to be a major quarantine zone! <laughs> Evacuate! Evacuate! <laughs> Warning, this video contains graphic images of very deadly spiders. If you suffer arachnophobia, this video is not for you. Ah oh yes, it's one of those beautiful quiet days at home, not. In this video, we'll be taking a look at what is going on in there. Yes, it's that time of year. We'll also be taking a scary look at what's going on in there. Hoo 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 hoo! And if we are lucky, and very lucky, we'll take a look at what's inside there. Maybe they're going to help me in the video, maybe not. Uh, maybe I'm going to need this stuff here, in this video. Oh, but Leo, let's not do something too crazy because I keep getting slapped up with yellow dollars. Uh, Google, YouTube, when is this going to end? This is killing me. Well, this is the year here. This is the date I'm making this video, the 17th of November. This is the normal time of year when you get those noisy cicadas. Do you remember what happened to me back in the early part of May? Yes, it was the mysterious Fukushima cicada, as I called it, that appeared right at the beginning of May. Never ever seen a cicada at that time of year, and that's heading into the Australian winter. A most unusual find, but how out of whack was that cicada? Looking back at 2017, there's today, the Fukushima cicada was back here at the early May, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six and a half months out of whack, because down here in November is when the cicadas tend to kick off. So my little friend that I found on my morning walk, this has come up at the right time of year, there's plenty of other cicadas to mate with, but when did this cicada get laid as an egg on a tree, hey? Hmm, when was this one born? This Australian cicada is bound by a prime number, it is seven. It is a seven year cycle that these little guys have got to go through before you see them like this. So there's seven years, uh, cicadas are bound by prime numbers, they are very curious for that. So it is a 2010 vintage cicada. Now let's just say, if this cicada decided to appear last year, let's say last November, it wouldn't have survived because the rest of its brood would have been underground. It would have been one year out of the very important cycle that keeps the species alive. Cicadas are very interesting and curious little critters. Whatever they get up to all those years underground, I believe that is still a mystery. As for their life cycle being bound by prime numbers, from what I read, this is to avoid major predators. Whether this is exactly true or not, well, maybe you can tell me, but it's a very, very deep and interesting subject to get into. Lots of reading, and I may have the links about some of that reading down in the info area of this video. So I'll come in and take a look at this beautiful cicada. It's a very feisty one, so if it flies away on me, don't be surprised, boys and girls. So I picked up one of these shells that they leave after they come up out of the ground. Very gentle with these. Oh, a... can you hear that already? I heard a noise. You know what the noise means? It means a boy. So there is a cicada waving at you. I think they're beautiful looking because I've got lots of childhood memories of chasing these in summertime. This is the underneath. That's a little proboscis that goes into the tree. They feed on the sap of trees. I'm not an expert, but I've just been playing with these for so long. I've learned things along the way. Does that count me as an expert? No. This is a male. I did hear a bit of drumming noise. There are the drums there. And if we're lucky and it gets warm enough, we might hear him make a noise. Um, their wings get pumped up when they come up uh, in the morning. I don't know when this one came out of ground. I just found on the tree this morning. Usually if they're down low in the morning, that's when they've been um, hatched. I'm trying to think. I was going to say born. But they sort of get born before because, well, they get laid into the tree as little eggs. And they fall to the ground and then the nymph spends all that time underground. Eh? They're harmless little critters. They feel like they bite, but it's their claws. They've got quite strong. You see the way it's clawing there? Quite strong claws. And this year, this is very important. This year, we're going to see lots of this color, I believe, and maybe yellow ones. But it was back in 2013, we had the black cicada brood, which are different to these guys because, well, they look different. Okay, I think they're slightly smaller as well. But I have been told that this is the big year for these types of cicadas here okay I might get the wings flapping if I hold in a certain way yes it's wanting to crawl isn't it I'm I'm fearful it's going to just take off with great velocity because this one is very feisty just get some wing flapping if we can Are you gonna flap for me or not probably not paying enough am I 
Oh, looks the camera. Trying to come in nice and close so we can have a very good look at the way this insect is formed. I've never worked out what the black and goldy bits at the front are between the eyes. Can you see that area there? I don't know what that does. Maybe it's like a squadron number. I don't know. Uh, they've got segments on them as well. And what you'll find is when birds capture these guys, they tend to eat out the fleshy backside go underneath here this all this part here is what the birds will eat they'll basically eat this part away and sadly sometimes you'll see like a front half crawling along without its back half they do well they do survive for a while without the back half but for how long who knows the other thing that i've seen i'm sure i've done a video about it is you'll see ants will sometimes get hold of these guys and girls as they're coming out of their shell so it's a very dangerous time when they come up out of ground They've got to get elevation, get up into the trees and hide, and the noise that they make, that's the males make the noise. There's all sorts of theories about what's going on there. Um, it's maybe to confuse birds. Obviously, it's to attract females, I hope. I hope that's what they're doing. But when you get lots of these in a tree, man, it is totally deafening. And I dare say if you are a bird, you'd be absolutely confused. Very, very nice, isn't it? It reminded me of Thunderbird 2, actually. Can you see that aspect to this green cicada? Green grocer is what people would call this one, but it looks like Thunderbird 2. Thunderbird cicadas are go. The other peculiar aspect to them, and I've got him moving there, they can move like crabs sideways, backwards, and all sorts of things. I've seen them do that. Oh, there you go, they do fly. Sorry about that. But as for their flight characteristics, they're sort of clumsy flyers. Although some people may argue they're quite good at flying. They tend to fly towards uh, darkness and things because I think they just see trees as a clump of darkness and safety. If that makes any sort of sense. Whoa! Wow, I've made it outside. Well, this one is quite an adventurous little cicada. Very desperate to get back to its friends. Just one more play before you go, hey? Okay, I've got him back. He's extremely feisty to go and play with the friends in the tree. That is the girls, because this is the boy. One final point. This cicada here has got the timing correct. Of its seven-year cycle, it has come up in the right window of time to mate and breed on. The May cicada, which got it wrong, had no friends to breed with. That was a fatal mistake, okay? I said it was the most lonely cicada on the planet. It was a very long summer last summer. Maybe it got the wrong cues. Uh, I do think in their final year, they come up quite close to the surface of the ground now. Maybe I'll be corrected there, but I did read that somewhere. Whether it was correct or not, who knows. Whatever they get up to underground, from what I've read, it is still a bit of a mystery. There's a couple of theories that they do stuff with the roots of plants and they feed on this and they do that, but exactly what they're doing, who really knows? And maybe be a very nice thing to take him outside and see him fly away to the safety of a tree. Flight radar on, you got your bearings, you're testing your wings there, you're ready to go. Let's see how good this one flies. Okay, go, whoa, yeah. Okay, off it goes, off it goes. It looks like it's going to make it. Oh, there's a bird! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, boys and girls, we didn't see that, okay? Oh, we didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> That was just terrible. I <laughs> Please don't be upset with me. That's, I didn't want it to be like that, but that poor cicada's become bird food, but that's the fate of many cicadas. <laughs> the next one we're going to take a look at are these very, very small, beautiful cicadas in here. But please let me just compose myself before we continue with the video. <sighs> oh, sorry about that. Um, feeling a bit better. I'm a bit embarrassed when I start to cry like that. Uh, what I've got in here is another style of cicada. It's very small. These are very, very alert cicadas. Um, very tricky to catch, actually. What I'd use to catch these ones is this here. Okay, you go near these things, they're very aware. Okay, so if I if these fly away from me before we have a look at them, uh, please don't be surprised, but I'll try and get one to show you. 
I might have to put the camera down to get one in my hand. They are extremely aware. Whoa. Okay, I have to be very fast here. Uh, these are very small. They can jump like crazy. They are very, very agile. Uh, very hard to spot as well because they're extremely well camouflaged. They've got to be like that because uh, birds like to eat them. Uh, but it's a very different, a small style cicada. And there are lots and lots of these about this year. That's the underneath of it there. Look at that, hey? I think that's a female. Extremely small, uh, very, very hard to catch. And if I just let it go my finger here. Yes, okay, there you see it. Look at the way it's walking there. It's got the stance of a cicada. It walks like a, or it does a crabby move as well. Yes, very unusual, isn't it? And they, man, when they get up and move, boy, do they move. I'm not sure whether you saw that, but it, the thing just flung up a high velocity into the light there. And now I'm going to try and get it out of there because I don't want it to be fried. Mind you, it's just an LED light. It's not hot at all. Oh, where's it gone now? That's the thing of these things. They go anywhere they want. I can't find that cicada in there. Oh, there it is there. I was just going to say, it's just done a magical disappearing act on me. Yes, uh, quite hard to see. When they're on a tree, they are virtually impossible. Quite miraculous little guys and girls. And if I'm fast, I can show you how I catch these with the net like that. That's about the only way I've ever got them. Okay, little tip for you if you're trying to catch them. There you go. Wouldn't lie to you, would I? Well, I've recaptured that one many times now, and I'll put it back into the jar for its friend. I got two because they are so tricky to deal with. Man, they move like lightning, those little guys. Beautiful things to look at as well. And that one's going to do an escape on me. Look at it go. That was the other smaller one that was in the jar. If I move it around nice and fast, we get a bit of a look at the leg action, the way it moves. Very elusive, little tiny cicada. Quite lucky to get this one on video without losing it. And strangely, if I put my hand near it, they're quite aware of things coming towards them and they'll jump up. See if it'll do it for me. Oh, didn't do it, but I've got it in my hand. Very hard to catch like that normally. I'll put in the jar, I'll put the lid on, and I'll go outside and release them. I'll just put them out in the grass here, and uh, they'll probably just disappear. And if there's one there, and you know, it even just disappears in the grass, it just looks like a bit of nature, doesn't it? Yeah. See if it'll do. I'm trying to get one of its jumps on camera so you can see how fast they can zip up. Come on, do your jump for me. Do something for me. Obviously not paying it enough, am I? Come on. Oh, now it's going to play in my hand here. Oh, it's going to do its jump, is it? See the way it, it pings up like that? Very unusual. They're so different to the larger cicadas. Come on, do your jump. We haven't got all day. It's going to do it. It does this sort of spring action. Come on. Now it wants to be my friend. Normally they'll, they'll take off a billion miles from you. Come on. No, it probably wants to be the thumbnail. Oh! Did we see it then or did it just go epic fail? Come on, do your jump. Okay, three, two, one, and jump. And not jump, obviously. Come on. Do your jump thing. Here we go. Come on, spring, spring to life. And... Uh, <laughs> it's not going to fly. Come on, just jump for me. And it's going to do it. It does that sort of swaying move and it'll go bing. Sometimes. Come on, please do your little jump for me. It does, it does this sort of swaying movement. It gets up on its legs and it just goes bing. Come on. Please do it for me. That's weird. Normally they, they just take off a billion miles from you. It's probably seen the camera as a safe place because it's dark. Maybe. I want to see you jump. Okay. That's enough of being a show pony. Time to jump. Come on. You can do it. I'm sure you can. Okay. And... Not. Jump. That's the trouble of dealing with insects, animals, and whatever else. They never perform the camera, do they? Never, ever do. Come on, do your jump. Please. Please. You can do it. I know what the problem is. They don't have ears. Well, they must have ears, because they can hear each other screeching normally, can't they? Come on. 
You can do it. I'm running out of arm. You gotta do it for me. Please jump. Please jump. Please jump. It doesn't sound right saying please jump, does it? Come on, that's it. You can do it. You can do it. You're brave. Be with your friends. If you jump, you get away from me. That's the best thing you've heard all day. Please jump. I hope my neighbours aren't watching me, talking to my arm. <laughs> Help me, someone. Please jump. I'm trying to get this thing to jump. Come on. You can do it. Be awesome. Be incredibly beautiful. Be like nature. Be something natural. Show us your special skill in life. Zippity doo da. Come on, jump. Get a spring in your step. You can do it. Come on. Obviously, um, it's struggling with the idea of jumping like they like to jump. And normally they're the most impossible little things to capture. Come on. You can do it. I'm going to give you to will to do it. And you're coming right up my arm now. Please do it for me. Oh, come on. If I get up nice and close, will you jump? Obviously not. You're off my arm now. I'm not going away until you do a jump for me and show us how you jump. Look, it's even listening to me. Look at it looking at me thinking I'm the biggest goose in the world. Please jump. I need to see you jump. You do it all the time. It's part of how you work. Come on, you can do it. Sometimes <laughs> if you come up to them and they see something threatening, they'll jump away. Let's see if it... Ah! Oh! Finally got there. Oh, <laughs> well, from crying in the video, now I'm laughing, hey? I don't know how much of the struggle to get those little cicadas to jump I'm going to show you. Maybe it's worth putting it all in. Maybe it's worth it as a standalone video. I was out there talking to my arm, and I think my neighbours were watching me. They just thought, oh, God, he's lost it now. Call the ambulance. Next thing we're going to take a look at is what's going on in there. Yeah! Do you remember when I started this tank, uh, I put a centipede in there and a spider and it actually relates back to another video. In fact, the video I'm having trouble with the yellow dollar, I went in and asked for a review and it instantly, almost in no time at all, look at this here. Not suitable for most advertisers. I've lost it and I'm very angry. Now, as far as I know, this isn't a short video. So how was it reviewed? It's a 48 minute video. How was it reviewed in such short time and given the fact that it can't have ads, it was rejected. Man, and what do I do now? How do I... What's the next thing you can do? Pull it off YouTube and try again? I'm sick and tired of this. I'm sorry if I'm sounding angry, but um, I believe YouTube has lost it. It is a dead site walking. There are going to be tons of producers walk away from the site because this stupid yellow dollar syndrome is killing people. Killing producers, and it's making the place just ridiculous. Okay. This was set up back on August 31, okay, it was a bit of an experimental tank to put a structure inside here to see how a redback spider would set up its web uh, versus the other spider tank which had no structure in the middle. There's a few things in here which are peculiar and I really don't feel like doing this video now. There's a, I think an orb spider there, there's some eggs down there which I believe they could be lizard eggs, I might be wrong there, it's just stuff that I found in the garden. There might be other creepy crawlers in there, I know I was putting beetles in there over the weeks um, a praying mantis. Again, the redback spider has killed it, that big one there, but not bound it up in web, and as far as I know, not eaten from it. So there's something about praying mantises and the spiders. There's also a smaller one there. I hope you can see it there. Dead, not bound up, and not eaten from what I can work out. I'm pretty sure I put that centipede down across McQueen there. There's not a sign of it, but it was weeks and weeks back now. Yes, August 31 to today, that's about two and a half months back, and what I have worked out, and this may surprise you, and it's given me a great idea, mind you, the chance of spider tank two, number two is zero in the current state of YouTube, unless something drastically changes. I'll tell you what, I'm active, actively looking for another site to go to. I'm very angry, guys, I'll tell you what, very angry, okay? I can actually pull this out. And I think I can have it as a bit of a freestanding thing because what I've worked out is these spiders will stay within their little webby structure. Okay, let me pull this out and I can put it up on the table here. Hopefully. Looks like that orb weaving spider's uh, making plans to escape. But I don't think you can get up past the Vaseline area at the top here. Can it or can't it? Uh, slipping, slipping, slipping. 
Oh, I think he's going to make a fool of me. Look at it go. Like a champion. Oh, no. It's down. It's down. So in the last two and a half months, there are actually two redback spiders in here. I believe the one there has eaten the other one, which like they like to do. There's two egg sacs there, but one of them has never hatched, so it's a bit of a strange thing. I always thought it took about four, five, six weeks for them to hatch. Uh, who knows, hey? The redback spider is up there, uh, nice and comfortable in the web. That's a nice look at the praying mantis. It's nice to be looking at this stuff without peeking through the glass. It's way clearer looking at it like this. And down in the web here, you can see all the things, lots of moths we've had at this time of year that I put into the web here and the spider has come along and fed from. I think this is really nice to be able to look at the home without peering through the glass. I'm going to try and get Mrs. Redback out so we can have a better look at her. Notice in the black beetles there, they love those black beetles. I think it's one of the main things they really feed from. Oh, she's spraying some web at me, but I'm not surprised. Remember, they're nocturnal little critters. And she's down a bit lower there. We might get a better view of her down there. Oh, she's there, but she's still a little bit hard to see properly. Okay, try and get her past. Oh, okay, she's down a bit lower now. I don't want her on a table, of course. I'm hoping she stays in a web. There's a nice, clear shot of her without looking through glass, which is very rare, isn't it, hey? Yeah, she looks lovely. The thing about her is that she can actually move quite fast. So she's probably not going to want to play with me too long. I'm just trying to get it to the top of the structure so we can see a brilliant red back, okay? And the other peculiar part to her was... She's doing that swaying thing again. Uh, she stopped... I thought she was about to lay another egg... And then she stopped, as in egg sac, but then she stopped. Now she's, well, she's having a scratch on the back. Come on. I don't, I don't want you to hide away. I want you to come up to the top. Yes, yeah, so obviously she uh, has no ears, so she can't hear what I wanted to do. There's that swaying motion. Again, also notice she's got a little bit of that sticky web primed uh, at the back there. Very interesting looking, isn't it? Very nice. And if she's got that sticky web primed, well, I bet you her little uh, fangs are primed as well. With venom, of course, trying to get her up to the top. Come on, dearie. We just want to have a very good look at you. They're, they're very hard to make go in a... She's going back inside again. Very hard to make go in a certain direction. They don't take any sort of cues. She's starting to come up naturally. I'm just letting her slowly walk up. Wow, she is a stunner, isn't she? I just want you to see that red back. Come on, keep up. Keep coming up, darling. I want to see how glorious you look. On that back side. That didn't sound too good, did it? <laughs> Never does with me. I hope I've got the focus right there, but that's the back, and it's not the bright red that I've seen on some spiders. It's sort of dulling off a bit. I'm just going to try something experimental here. Try and get her to fling that sticky web at the camera, but like this. If I bring these in like this, she may turn around. Either she's going to try and bite me, or she's going to fling her web at the camera. Which one is it going to be? Oh. Well, she's on the move. She's nearly down on the table. I'm banking on the thing. She will not leave a web. And as yet, she hasn't done so. But she's not attacking those tweezers yet. I'll just have one more go. See if she'll spray at us. And I've locked the focus off this time. Okay, let's see if she'll spray at those tweezers there. Will she do it or won't she, hey? Mmm. Don't think I'm going to get it. Nah, she's taken recluse up there. So to have a structure that you can lift out and have a good look at the spider is actually quite nice, I feel. Uh, the other thing I noticed was when there was only one spider, mind you, there was a time when there were two in there. I didn't have that frantic uh, nightmare that I saw in Spider Tank 1.0. The mystery of these egg sacs, why haven't these hatched? In particular, that one there. I'm very curious about that one there. Not so much about that one. That's a fresher one. Let's take a look inside this one. I'm not exactly sure whether these egg sacs are from the spider because uh, there was the other spider in there. I couldn't really see what was going on to have both of them removed here, aren't I? Well, maybe we'll look at both. Okay. I'll carefully get this back in and of note there has been no male redback spider around, okay? Hmm. So this girl's been in there quite some time without a male, but they don't need males. Whether there'll be Spider Tank 2.0 at the current rate of YouTube, I'm saying no. In fact, I should be actively lo looking for another site to upload to between you, me, and the Redback Spider.
I know there are many in my audience who love seeing me put on surgical gloves because they know I'm about to do something really epic. This egg sac here has been in a spider tank for about two months, that's eight weeks, and as far as I know that's a little bit too long, or might be wrong, that's why I'm opening it up. Uh, there'd been no male spider in that spider tank. Uh, as for what the female was getting up to before it was in the tank, who knows, they don't need males to breed. And we'll just see what comes out of here. I've got the spider spray on the side here, okay, in case something you know, horrific comes out of this. I could see no spiderlings in the tank, and this is feeling rather weird. I'm trying to describe to you what it's feeling like under the knife. It doesn't feel normal. Okay, it's sort of got me worried. Uh, very tough. These uh, sacks, the, the web that the redback spider makes around this is incredibly strong and it's protective. And I'm just doing my surgical best here to work out what is going on. Mmm. Has that spider been shooting blanks or something? I can't see anything that looks spidling there. Let's just take a closer look. There we are up nice and close, and that would, would have been the inside there. It looks like, um, to me, it looks like dried up eggs. It would be the best way I could describe it. They haven't matured into spiderlings. That is a mystery. Let's open up the other egg sac. As far as I know, this egg sac here is a month and a half. So that's six weeks, and that's getting right on the time of the development of these egg sacs, as far as I understand. Although it does relate a, a lot to environmental factors, and I've just got to get a knife in here because it is very strong, as I discussed with the previous egg sac. Let's see what comes out of this one. And remember, I don't recall, there were two redbacks in that tank. Whether the mum is the one which is in there at the moment. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it looks like we have life coming out of this one. I've just got a nail. Oh my goodness me! No! 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 They're everywhere! They're everywhere! Oh no! I've got a crisis! I've got a crisis! I've got the spider spray! There's one there! I'll just do the perimeter first! Oh my goodness me! That was horrific! I'm doing a major decontamination here! I've taken the spider tank away! There's spiderlings everywhere! They're taking over the workshop down here! Oh my goodness me! This is gonna have to be a major quarantine zone! Totally unsafe! Oh! There's so many spiders! So many spiders! Too much prey! I've got to evacuate! I've got to evacuate! <laughs> oh! 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 That was so scary! I better leave this video here! I've got a huge mess to clean up so many spiders! <laughs> Too much spray! Oh! Oh, never again, never again.